Today, I want to teach you about my peach pie bead recipe and show you not only what it is, but how you can make it at home. So let's get started. So first of all, I want to say this is probably not an original mead idea. I don't know that there are many original mead flavor ideas at this point. I probably just overheard someone talking about it or saw it in a uh, social media platform, someone saying, hey, I've made this or want to make this. From inspirations like that, I wanted to make my own version of a peach pie mead. And so I set out to figure out how to do it. I've done banana cream pie, I've done apple pie, I've done, I think those are most of the pie side that I done. I hit those two ideas and I was like, okay, well, for a pie to be a pie, it needs to have a crust flavor, it needs to have whatever flavor pie filling that would be, so peach in this case, and some spices. So I'm going to show you a recipe card for a one gallon version of this. However, every element of this video is me making a 10 gallon version of this. So if you would like to make this at the scale I did, multiply by 10, but this is a one gallon recipe here on the screen. I'm gonna first talk about why I chose certain things and then we'll dive into the process. First of all, your honey choice uh, can be really anything. I would use a lighter honey in this circumstance. I wouldn't use like a buckwheat or a really dark toasty honey. I used uh, specifically rose apple and mamain blossom, which are two more trop tropical-esque kinds of honeys. So you don't have to use those. So I'll just use a lighter honey. We are using the Sapel US05. It's just a clean fermenter. And we are using a bit of a, a beer side for this one to get some crust flavor. So I really wanted to lean into the beer side, even though I wouldn't really call this a braggot. You're gonna need, of course, plenty of peaches. So we used three pounds of peaches for the one gallon. For mine, it was 30 uh, pounds of peaches, pectic enzyme. Then our spices, as you can see on there, uh, we put those after the fermentation had finished. We did stabilize this thing so we could back sweeten with more honey. So that's what we did. Now you see the grain build side. I wanted to again, make a more crust-like profile. So I started Googling, hey, how can I get a crust profile from maybe some beer elements. And so I found a combination of grains that work well. Brown malt, honey malt, and some brewer's malt. The three of those have helped to really pronounce a more crust-like taste in this brew. That's a really small amount of grain. If you're doing a one gallon batch, I used a more amount obviously for a 10 gallon batch, but that is super important for this. You can attempt to go other ways with getting your uh, pie idea, your crust idea, maybe some graham crackers and things like that. However, I liked this idea. So we got all of these things for our recipe. Again, I'm making a 10 gallon version. So I started with my peaches about 24, 48 hours before I wanted to brew. I took 30 pounds of peaches and I de-skinned them. In this circumstance, I actually took a potato peeler and skinned them all that way. I also realized I could have blanched them and then apparently the skins fall off. I learned too late about that one. I de-pitted them and you can see this giant five gallon bucket of peaches that I had uh, de-pitted and de-skinned. We threw some pectic enzyme, enzyme, enzyme on those and we threw them in the freezer for a day. We then pulled them out after the freezer day and they started to thaw out. They took a bit to thaw out, but once they were done, that was our start. That was where we're gonna get most of our peach flavor. We got some really nice peaches with that. From there, we went ahead and started combining our water and our honey and our peaches. You'll notice I'm using a really big Firmzilla 13, 15? It's a 13 gallon um, conical fermenter that is it gave me plenty of space for me to be able to firm it with this. So we combined all of that into this Firmzilla. We then just blended it up with a little drill attachment. So those peaches got pureed basically, but the honey and the water, the peaches were all in there. Uh, pectic enzyme was in there before, of course. In the same kind of time zone that I had been waiting for my peaches to th like thaw out, I went ahead and made some wort. If you don't know what wort is, it is the grain and water mixture that comes from brewing beer. So in this circumstance, we took our three grains that we had, we put them into a 
brew bag and put that into a pot. We then got our mash water up to, I believe it was a 155, uh, was the goal mash temp there. And it was only about a uh, gallon and a half of water for my 10 gallon, and then we added some sparge water. We mashed all of those grains in that bag for an hour, and then we pulled that out, and we ended up adding that straight into the mixture with all of our peaches and our water and our honey. So we had partial mash idea. I will not call this a braggot because it's not anywhere close to uh, grain buildy enough. Sugars from that to be prevalent enough. We then added the Safale USO5. I had to use plenty of it because again, huge batch for here and uh, started fermenting. I wanted to add my Fermate O and all those things later on because this is a higher ABV mead. So we added the Fermate O and all those things at about 24, 48 hours. We added plenty of it, again, 10 gallon batch. This thing fermented pretty vigorously. It was pretty cool watching it because all the little pieces of peach were just flying everywhere. I don't know if I got any video of it, but very cool to watch. Fermentation took roughly about three, four weeks for this to finish out. And I could tell it was finished because a lot of that peach that had been in the uh, mixture flying around had started to settle and the bubbling had slowed down. We took another gravity reading, we found out we're at 1.000 gravity after the primary, which we started at 1.100. This brew is about 13% ABV, which is a you know strong mead, but that's okay. We moved from the vessel into two different buckets because I didn't have the ability to do one big fermentation vessel at the time. So we moved into two different buckets and this is where we had to juggle a little bit. You won't have to juggle as much if you have a smaller amount because your steps will be more clear. So I'm gonna kind of speak like I did them all in one go, even though the video might look different with two vessels. From that point, we went ahead and said, okay, I want to make sure that I can actually add fermentable sugar to this thing that will not be eaten or consumed. So we stabilized it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite and let that set for you know a week or two. Just let it all chill out. It needed time anyways, it's pretty young. Once that had settled in there, we added our spices. So literally I used ground spices for this. Uh, it was a eighth of a teaspoon of ginger, eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, one cinnamon stick and a teaspoon of vanilla. We added that into the fermenter. The cinnamon stick was the part that really needed more time. So we let those set for like two weeks, basically. It just kind of all sat inside of it. We then, you know, had to fish out that cinnamon stick basically. And we back sweetened this thing. We back sweetened it to where it's like a 1.017, somewhere in that realm, roughly. It sat for even longer, clearing up, just, you know, doing its thing. There were points, like I said, I had a big batch of this, so I ended up doing some weird stuff where I back sweetened with uh, half of the mead, essentially. I over back sweetened so that I would, when I combined them, it'd be a conglomerate. But again, I'm not trying to get too technical here. The thing I noted post fermentation is the peach flavor had been really zapped. So I ended up using this peach, like nectar kind of stuff. And I got online and found some of it in, actually on Amazon, I ordered about, I think it came out to be about um, 128 ounces of it. And we added 96 of it. Yes, that's my math. Into the, um, one of those containers. So that really helped to pronounce more peach flavor. It also kind of made it more murky. So it needed lots of time, but we mixed that peach nectar in. Again, on the card, you'll see some peach nectar side. Uh, you can do alternative flavors if you want, but I would recommend adding some peach flavoring, something to continue to pronounce the peach side because it was pretty blasted. Once we had all of those things combined, we went ahead and let it set for quite some time to mellow out, let things fall out of suspension. My last step, what steps I should say, I ended up recombining this into a big fermenter or into a big vessel, which you'll see, and there's a little bit of a sponsor to this video at the end I'll talk about. I had a big enough vessel at this point to put all of my mead back together. And so that's what we have here is this mead a little bit hazy, not super clear. I'm sure I could go through and clear it more, but 
We're four and a half months old at this point. And I must say, this thing smells, I mean, it smells like a peach pie. It smells so good. This, with more age, more mellowing, like all of those flavors just kind of chill out together. It's gonna be amazing. The malt, Grain build idea that we did, or added in here, gives it that kind of um, deepy, <laughs> deepy, deep crust-like flavor profile, which is super important. And all those spices are, are well blended together. The sweetness is just enough to continue to pronounce the peach flavor. There is peach flavor there, of course, but the ABV is, uh, I, I'm gonna say low, but you don't perceive it as much. While this mead was a lot of uh, flavors, a lot of effort, it is super good. And as part of this video, I wanted to send it off to a competition and see how it would fare. So I sent it off to Valhalla, the meeting, meaning, meeting of life, whatever the mead competition is. I threw it in the experimental category for obvious reasons, and it won third place in that category. And I, I had no, again, no expectation of doing well with it. In fact, I named it, give me advice on my peach pie mead. I'm still waiting for my notes to come back from them, but it scored pretty dang well and did well enough to get third place out of I think 17 or 18 entries. So I'm very excited for this one. It's pretty dang good and I highly recommend you uh, go and try to make it. You might have your own version on how you can do this. You might have made a peach pie in another facet and I'd be curious to hear how you got the flavors to pop in certain manners because some of them are weird to get. So this video is not over. There is a sponsor for this video. Today's video is sponsored by Viver, a company that makes a lot of various products. And specifically, we are talking about this 13.25 gallon stainless steel milk wine jug. It's a container, as they're gonna call it. This says milk on it. Obviously, I think it's the shape of most milk containers, but specifically, we're using it for wine in this circumstance. Now, the cool thing about this not just the capacity, 13.25 gallons. That stainless steel is really nice uh, because it means you can age in this thing for longer. You don't have to necessarily worry about any plasticky taste, if you had plastic, of course. The only thing is you do have to fill it up if you were to uh, age because you would have oxygen. Now, as a fermenter, let's talk about the options here. There is a lid on top. This is currently holding that peach pie mead from this video. and. It's 10 gallons full, so it's going about right here. There's some space on top. I'm gonna have to bottle pretty soon. But as a fermenter, possible fermenter, this lid comes off, it's pretty nice. And there are some latches, which are cool too. So essentially it just latches back on like that. It's got a good seal and boom. So now it's totally sealed, which is good. Airtight or pressure positive, whatever the word would be. So this lid has the possibility of being a great fermentation lid. And I'll tell you why. If I took a drill bit and a grommet, the drill bit, of course, to drill a hole in the stainless steel. Now it might be kind of tough, but I think it could be possible. And put a grommet in there. I could convert this into a, its own like fermentation lid, meaning it could actually breathe and do its thing. I'm probably gonna do this in the future. I, I've also considered just leaving this as an aging vessel and just not doing that. But that is a possibility if you wanted to do this. There's also the possibility, I'm a little more sketched out by this idea, of taking and putting a spout or a port on the side of this via drill. Again, a little more sketched out because these walls are, are, are solid steel and I feel like I'd mess up that side, so I'm probably not gonna do that. If you are pro at drills and bits, maybe you could do that. But between your possible airlock and a spout on here, this could be a great fermentation vessel. So you have kind of dual or multi-use for it. Other than that, the price point is pretty good at a little over $125 for this 13.25 gallon uh, fermenter or aging vessel. You're saving some money compared to the other fermentation vessels out there that are stainless steel. They're not really cheap. The construction on this is nice. Yes, it's a milk vessel, but once you get past that, it's not too scary. Good lid, good capacity, can't complain. If you would like to support me and check out this product, you can find it in with an affiliate link below. That affiliate link will actually help support the channel. So if you wanna do this, 
can support the channel that way. And uh, thank you to Viver for sponsoring this video today. I will be using this quite a bit in the future. I hope you will go make the mead that's inside here, this peach pie mead, because it's pretty dang good. And I'll see you in the future with another video.